Welcome back to the Huntress Trials for May in the shadow of Galaxy Racer EU's dominance performance from last month. My name is Canopit, stepping in for Joker alongside Shoot. And today we'll be opening our tournament by having our first round of quarterfinals, a single best of three. Tomorrow, the semifinals and the grand finals themselves. But Shoot, what have we got on the table for this one best of three today? Well, for the one best of three today, we've got a match that I personally have wanted to see since the first tournament, but unfortunately did not get on stream. So it's actually a very interesting one here. We are looking at Resolve Blue versus the excellently named Gucci Gang. Now, I, I, I do really want to see this game a lot because Resolve Blue versus Movie Star Riders Blue Anyone who uh, anyone who watched the last tournament, that was a fantastic set. Really close games. It was it was amazing to cast as well. Awesome stuff from both teams. Whoever wins this will go on to fight the winner of Movie Star Riders Blue and Violet Token, another team that showed up last tournament as well in the quarter in the semifinals tomorrow, and that will be one hell of a game. So I want to see this because one, I want to see more Resolve Blue gaming, and two. I want to see who makes it through because I want the Resolve Blue versus Movie Star Riders ma uh, rematch, but I do also want to see Gucci Gang maybe you know rise up and take the place from Resolve Blue instead, and then we can have a real good under underdog story. And I like that kind of thing. I like seeing uh, teams like that just kind of you know go above and beyond and take a position that maybe people wouldn't think they would. Well, just to cover before we get into depth on this particular matchup, the rest of the participants in the competition. You mentioned Movie Star Riders Blue making yes. it to the finals last time round, but they didn't oh, yeah. manage to take a game off of Galaxy Racer. It was a full three and zero, even in the best of five. Yeah, they yeah. have to be hurting to get at least a win back, if not, you know, at least a game back. Sorry, if not the win itself. Oh yeah, for sure. Movie Star Riders Blue are not the kind of team, from how I saw them play in the last tournament, uh, to take a win like that, to take a loss like that just on the nose and not care about it. I guarantee you these girls have been practicing. I guarantee you that they are that they are very hungry for this win. I think Movie Star Riders Blue Violet Token is gonna be I think I think I think Violet Token have got their work cut out for them. But that's a, that's a story for a different universe where we're streaming that game. We are not streaming that game, we are streaming Resolve Blue Gucci Gang instead. And when it comes to tomorrow, that is when Movie Star Riders Blue will be the ones who are hungry and on stream. So make sure you're watching tomorrow at the same time, ladies and gentlemen, on the stream, because Movie Star Riders Blue, I'm sure, if they make it through, because they might not, will be absolutely ravenous for that, for that tawny win today. But Resolve Blue... I think they also want it too. You know, they only got to the semifinals last time. They want a shot at the finals as well. I think. You know, you don't enter well, yeah. a tournament to get second to get like uh, fourth place. Yeah, well, Resolve last time against Movie Star Riders, they were the only team to take Movie Star Riders to a th you know to a third game. You know, because it's best of three yeah. all the way th way through. So, absolutely, that's one I'm very much looking forward to. But um, I guess you know. For everyone who's coming into this one, and maybe for everyone who's not necessarily watched a tremendous amount of competitive League of Legends recently, you know, talking about the meta overall shoot, you know, what are you feeling like the big, you know, the big difference makers are right now? The big difference makers in the meta overall? Oof. Well, obviously there's been a lot of talk about Morgana in the jungle, right? Like, we've been seeing that a lot all over the place, and it's just been incredibly strong. The ganks are absolutely insane. You know, Morgana has been infamous for as long as League of Legends has been out for that route that lasts three weeks, right? Uh, of course, it's only the last three seconds to anyone who doesn't know, but it feels like three weeks. There's a classic meme of, I got reported for AFKing because I got hit by Morgana Q, right? Because it just puts you out of the game for so long. Uh, and having that on a jungle champion, you know, usually that's just a threat in the bottom lane but on a jungler but on a jungler you can threaten it in top mid you know you can threaten it from different angles that you wouldn't usually be able to threat from in a support role i think even though they may have nerfed the uh, the clearing speed on her uh which they have done um because of the uh because of the damage that her w deals to minions and monsters i think that she's still an absolute monster and we will be seeing a bit of her in this tournament though that being said Speaking of junglers, and I do think jungle is one of the most important roles in League of Legends at the moment, Hecarim has been nerfed. But I don't think he's been gutted. 
You know, I think we might see some, I think we might still see some Hecarim. There was a lot of Hecarim in the last tournament, and I think some people have been putting some serious work into that champion, so we might also see a little bit of that as well. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you know, we've had the he Hextech chem tank nerf, we've had yeah. multiple different nerfs to Hecarim, but you're still rating yeah. Hecarim as a champion worth considering here in the jungle. Well, the thing about this is, is that Hecarim still does the thing that Hecarim is allowed to do. His damage has just been nerfed. He doesn't burst you, he doesn't deal a lot of sustained damage and have a lot of sustained health in the team fights unless you build him that way now. You can, you can still build him as a tank that allows you to put out a lot of CC and disruption with the knockback on his Charge of Darkness, the E, and also, uh, you know, his ultimate is just very useful for weird gank angles as well. So I think that part of the character has not really been changed enough to say that that is, um, to say that that is out of the question. And I think that in itself is a very unique strength that Hecarim has. It's kind of like Zack, in a way, so maybe maybe we'll see Zack become the new Hecarim. Who knows? But uh, it's a. Uh, I, I think Hecarim is still worth it. He's not as good as he was. I don't think we'll see him pick ban every game like we did last time. But I do still think he might get picked up, especially because experience and comfort on a champion is not something that you can uh, is not something to shy away from. You know, if you've been playing a lot of Hecarim because he's good you might just have picked up enough skill at Hecarim to still make him effective, even at this level of play. So to look at the wider picture again, you know, we're in a kind of a, an environment here where in this first day, though we've got eight teams of, you know, of, of female players coming into this one, we'll only have four by day two. So you know, while we've got best of threes every single round, so teams will get the chance to adapt to their style somewhat, they only get that one series to really show their show what they're capable of so with that in mind are there any particular styles of play shoot that you would be favoring here especially for maybe some of our underdog teams coming in you know is mm. is split mm. pushing pick team fighting you know, what do you feel like is strongest right now i think that's an excellent question i think the higher i think it really depends on the bracket of skill of the players of what is more effective at certain points i would say at this stage in the tournament uh especially Especially in this game coming up, I will say, because fighting uh, Resolve Blue versus Gucci Gang is a very different... Both of these teams are going to play very differently today than if they were against Galaxy Racer, who, as we all know, are absolutely insane and took the last tournament without even dropping a game. So, I think, honestly, dive comps. Dive comps, I think, are actually quite strong right now. I think... Uh, Playing passive and playing for the late game can also work, but it has a bad matchup into the dive comp because dives come in, they make it so that it's harder for you to reach that late game tipping point that your team wants to reach, and also it makes it so that, you know, they can snowball off that advantage that they get, and then suddenly, yeah, maybe you're playing for the 30 minute mark, but if the game ends at 25, there's not really too much you can do. Um, I do think split pushing is a decent strat, but only as you go higher and higher into the bracket. I think at this level, at this first stage, we might see a lot of aggression, a lot of a lot of fast-paced, high-tempo League of Legends. So if we, yeah, if we are favoring dive as kind of like you know, the way to be able to take the initiative, you know, we've already talked a little bit about the jungle champions. If you're going to favor more towards the dive style. Who are the kind of the pieces you want to bring to your team to allow for that ease of execution and to make sure it actually works? Yeah, um, well, we've already talked about, you know, Hecarim, who is the classic, you know, but basically the poster child of dive comping, but you've also got junglers like Udea, like Zac, uh, anyone who can really just kind of get in very quickly. Um, top laners, you don't really care about too much here. Um, if you're caring about playing against uh, uh, dive comps, Orn is a pretty strong top laner. So, it, uh, but Malphite is a very strong aggressive top laner as well. If you want to have, you know, TP ganks and stuff like that, um, I could see probably more tanky supports as opposed to as, as opposed to enchanters. You know, your Nautiluses, your Threshes, your Leonas, um, carries that can go in from a uh, from from a distance. So. Uh, Tristana is a classic dive carry who can also be flexed to mid lane if you want to. Um, just because of that, you know, she jumps in with the W, does all the damage she needs to, gets the gets the kill, gets the reset, jumps out, and she's fine. Um, Varus is someone who I've been seen uh, picked up. Uh, I've been watching a little bit of NA esports. I know uh, now EU viewers do not <laughs> do do not uh, do not chastise me for that. I know that NA is uh, quite Omega lol, as the kids say, but. Uh, 
Virus in NA has actually been been seen pretty de uh, a decent amount in dive comps just because he can provide damage from such a safe distance outside of tower, and sometimes that one uh, W empowered Q is all you need to finish someone off. And then as far as mid laners go, you want a mid laner who can follow up and who can actually do things. Maybe Oriana, something like that. The, the, there are a lot of set pieces to it, and it's very flexible. You know, I'm just talking about champions that are coming to mind as we're talking about it, but honestly. For these players, it could be, there, there really could be just anything on their minds here. They could go for whatever and make it work. I have, I have faith in their abilities. All right, so let's get to our first champ select. So just for transparency with you guys, the the champ select has already been taking place in pro draft. So we will be just be kind of going for the formality of mm -hmm. seeing what has actually been chosen here. But of course, we'll just talk about it as it comes up on screen. Uh, so we said, you know, we're expecting to see a lot of emphasis put towards the jungle. Let's see what Resolve Blue, who are definitely coming to this one as the more favoured team, decided was their first priority. Yeah, because uh, having first pick is always a really is always a really important. Uh, it's you set the tone of the draft with this first pick, and so we'll see who they possibly want to uh, want to go for here. Um, yeah, we got the uh, we got the pro draft in just a few moments ago, so. We can see that Mental Boomerang, who is a uh, cl classic username, I remember Mental Boomerang being absolutely insane on the uh, Thresh, I believe, last uh, last tournament. They're picking Leona, and then they've gone into Lux and Hecarim on Gucci Gang. Uh, Lux, really good mid laner, also can be uh, also can be flexed into a supporting role as well, um, just to get that extra damage on bot lane. And then they've gone Rek'Sai for the jungle on Resolve Blue. How do you feel about Rek'Sai? I, I, I don't see too much Rek'Sai these days. I, I mean, I kind of like the you know the reliability of having that tremor sense around the place because a spot yes. you know the jungle is coming. You know, as you mentioned, you know, that's going to be hugely influential, and we've got exactly what you wanted, which was to see Hecarim in the mix. We now know what maybe we know what the two v two bottom lane looks like as well. We've got Tristana and Leona. You mentioned as a good mm -hmm. addition to any of these kind of dive comps, but now sort of halfway through the draft, what do you think about? what we've gotten so far. Well, you can very clearly see Resolve Blue's uh, style of what they're trying to go for here. You've got Leona, you've got Rek'Sai, you've got Tristana. Rek'Sai is very good at, like I say, these aggressive dive compositions, you know, because of that uh, because of that burrow tunnel on the E, you can get under a lot of walls and also her ultimate makes it so that you can uh, you can just jump on one person and do a lot of damage to them, which will provide a lot of aggression there. Um, and then on Gucci Gang, you can also kind of see aggression with the Hecarim pick, but Lux and Ezreal is a very pokey lane. They don't want to engage on you. They want to hit you with something and then take as much out of that one small trade as they can, and then just wear you down over the course of things. Uh, but Nah coming out on the top lane, that is... Uh, that is a sustained pick right there. You don't win a lane against Nah. You you survive a lane against Nah. You know, yeah, <laughs> a that's good gonna be a blind will, uh... pick from Gucci Gang. So Resolve yeah. have got the chance to respond back in, and apparently they think the Akali is up to the task. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So that'll be that'll be Akali in top, which I actually don't think is too bad. Um, the problem with Nah is uh, his ability to survive extended trades and to sustain through the lane. Akali's strength is being able to burst people down incredibly quickly. If she can catch Nar, if she gets six first, catches Nar without Mega, and just unleashes a ton of burst on him, that's a pretty. Con I'm pretty confident in saying they'll be able to kill very easily there. Um, but the only problem with that is you need to have enough lane dominance and have the right positioning at the right time to get ahead like that. And Nar can play around it by just playing safe around that halfway through level five timing. So it is kind of a. Uh, it is kind of a uh, it, it's it, it's a skill matchup for sure. It's a skill matchup. I think resolve. I, I think mental boomerangs resolve. Uh, 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 resolve, if you will, is good enough to uh, to do so. Sorry, as you could tell, I had that punchline in my mind, and then I just <laughs> completely messed up the the delivery. But it's okay. It's oh, well, uh, no. yeah. Now we've got the full team lineups here. You know, can you give me you know? As much as we were expecting to see Dive come in there, and it's seeming mm -hmm. like a lot of the components we were talking about for Gucci Gang are in yeah. place. You know, what are the overall strategies? Are they the same thing for both teams, or are we seeing differences there? Well, I can see Gucci Gang going a little bit later. Ezreal scales pretty hard and has some really good teamfight poke. 
Lux scales also very hard. You know, even if you play Lux as a support, she does still reach that level of disgusting laser cannon that you just need to be worried about constantly. Uh, especially when paired with um, uh, with someone like Hecarim, you have two champions who both do a lot of damage who can join a fight from a very long distance away. Ezreal can pick up uh, kills with his global true shot barrage, and Lux just needs to be in the anywhere in the vicinity to be able to pick up a kill with her final spark. Um, the one thing that I do want to mention that we haven't yet is this mid matchup, right? Mm. Lucian versus Velkos. That is a lot closer than it may seem because that that looks like ad carry versus squishy burst mage with no mobility right so that's like you know oh gg right you just take the favorable trades all the time and you win velkos has a lot of outplay potential i genuinely believe he's one of the highest skill ceiling mages in the game because of the because of your ability to combo your spells together and to put your opponents into um, into unfavorable situations and then capitalize on it. Basically, if Lucian gets cocky, Velkos can capitalize very quickly, especially with someone who ranks so aggressively as Hecarim from such an early stage in the game. And if you get ahead on Velkos, the amount of damage you can just dish out might just be what you need to keep that lane going. So I, I think I think it'll be a pretty aggressive, pretty explosive mid lane. There is obviously, of course, the universe which everyone's expecting where Lucian dominates the Velkars and there's not much to talk about. But I think there's potential for something really fun there. Okay, so correct me if I've misunderstood, but so, yeah. so for Gucci Gang, it feels like so we've got yeah, we've got the Nar, we've got the Hecarim, you know, the mm -hmm. fight starters, the you know, the control front line there. Yes. And yes. then we've got the damage dealers who want to keep their distance. And I presume mm -hmm. that's, you know, kind of how the team fights want to get lay out here. For Resolve Blue, you know, what what's their overall approach to this first game gonna be? Oh, I think quite simply they're going to try and push their bot lane ahead as far as they can. I think they have trusted Mental Boomerang to win, to win or at least scale from that uh, from that lane versus Nar. Um, and then I think they have trust in Lucian to do well against the Velkars. And Rek'Sai is going to focus almost entirely on killing this Ezreal if they can, or at least killing the Lux just to get Tristana as far ahead as possible. And then just kind of roll with that, use, Tristan, use Tristana's power spike and just her better scaling. Uh, up to the late game to push dragon objectives, to push barons, push towers, and then eventually just push it down. Okay, so we're almost into the first game of our best of three today. So, you know, with the two stars into each other, talk to me, shoot about, you know, say let's let's fast forward ten minutes into this into this first game. Yeah. What should we expect the game to look like? I would expect there are two possibilities here. I would say the game is going even, and that is favorable for Gucci Gang. Um, like the game, like you know, the kills are relatively even. The gold is maybe even is maybe even maybe a little bit higher on the Gucci Gang side. Um, and then that's just kind of it's relatively passive. The only big fights are around things like Dragon. Maybe there's a fight around Rift Herald uh, when that starts to spawn, and that's just kind of like a. I don't want to say it's a boring universe, but it is definitely a much more passive uh, universe where trades are trades haven't really gone so well for either side, and they just want to focus on farming. The other universe is where Resolve Blue's early dive strat works, and they can take this snowball a lot. At that point, I'm thinking the kills will be probably three times as high on Resolve Blue. They will have a dragon. They will probably also be looking at taking the first tower as well, um, and in that position. Uh, Gucci Gang need to play this from behind until they manage to uh, until they manage to find Resolve Blue slipping up, capitalize on that, and that's how they get back into the game. That, that's my analysis on how I think this is going to go. But oh. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. That's the beauty of League of Legends is that anything can happen. You could spend ages and ages reviewing VODs and looking at different strategies and all this kind of thing like I do, and then completely get it way off the mark because who knows, right? That's, that's why oh, we love this game. These are two very different <laughs> ten-minute stages we're talking about here. We've got very pastoral right, you know, kind of yeah. you know, farming, farming simulator on one side, and apocalyptic, <laughs> world-burning excitement on the other side. <laughs> I mean, it's a great way to start off today. Do bear in mind, hmm. guys, that there are there is a pretty substantial prize pool for today's event. A thousand pounds. But you only get access to this prize pool if you make it through to day number two, which mm -hmm. means that our match today. 
you know, even it's at uh, uh, the very start of the competition, this is still hugely important for our teams. Yeah, well, it, it's kind of like, a, you know who wants to be a millionaire, right? Classic show. Everyone knows that show. Um, people think that it's all about oh, getting to a million or getting to a quarter of a million or whatever. No, it's about getting to the point where you're past your first checkpoint. And even if you get the question wrong, you at least go home with something, right? Hmm. Because because that's at least something. They need to win this game, result, both Resolve Blue and Gucci Gang, because otherwise they don't walk away with anything to show for entering this tournament. And that in itself is enough to drive you. You know, like at least if you win today, the rest of the tournament is, is, is good, but you get to walk away with something for your troubles. Whereas if you lose today, you go home with nothing. Yeah, you've got to imagine coming into this one, the teams, they've got to be you know, preparing furiously, diving into all of the trends, oh, yeah. fire, finding all of the data they can. You know, even when the champ slate that's just gone past, you know, certainly you know, a lot of us have got the experience of playing, even like on the side, you know, playing Clash, seeing the opponent saying, can yeah. we possibly afford to let this player's one trick through? And are we going to regret it forever if we do? Yeah, for real. Well, we didn't really talk too much about the bans that we saw on Resolve Blue, but uh, or on Gucci Gang. But there were a lot of uh, a lot of champions that have been kind of scary that have been banned. Um, Kane, uh, Kane got banned by uh, by Gucci Gang, who is a very scary uh, snowbally jungler, especially if you go Shadow Assassin, um, which can help in dive comps, which was which was I think their second ban. So they banned that out before any other champions got picked. Uh, Jin as well does a lot of stuff like that, and uh, yeah, I, I think uh, I think it's gonna be I think it's gonna be really uh, really exciting this game. I, I'm very excited to see how it uh, how it turns out, and we are gonna see how it turns out as we get straight into the rift. Here we are, yeah, game number one of the May Huntress Trials. Our opening match here, of course, Resolve Blue versus the Gucci Gang. We'll see if Gucci Gang can manage to pull this one off. If you were going to lay down some odds here, shoot. Here we go. Who <laughs> are you favoring? Who are you classic, favoring for this first game? The classic melody prediction here is, uh, is for me, is Resolve Blue. I like their, their draft a little bit more. I like the early game aggression. I think that the Hecker and pick on, um, on Gucci Gang is nice and is good. But I just don't think it has. I don't think it does enough to a Tristana and Leona bot lane. And I think that getting Velkos ahead or getting Nara ahead is not as important as getting the bot lane ahead. So you kind of get relegated into being a uh, counter jungler or a counter ganker as opposed to taking the initiative like Hecarim wants to do. So I I'm gonna go with Resolve Blue here. Though I do think it is close. That's not me. It's not me saying that it's decided or anything. Not even close, ladies and gentlemen. Not even close. Well, I mean, I've you know. I think I've always got a soft spot for the underdogs in any kind of story. And Gucci Gang definitely come into this one as underdogs. You mentioned before, Resolve Blue, definitely a pretty darn scary team with the threat, as you said before, of leveling Summoner's Rift 10 minutes in. It's yeah, going to be precisely. playing close to the edge the whole way through. Yeah, it's going to be a really interesting one. And we're already seeing a few of these trades that I was talking about on mid lane just kind of coming out from the Lucian. Belfast needs to play this safe until he's got and, until he's got six, at least, I feel. Just because at that point, you have the huge punish potential of that laser beam ultimate. Yeah, such crow Mac Wow, quite a fun name to say, <laughs> uh, as has brought the barrier into the mid lane to try and make sure they stay safe. So they escape. On the other side on Lucian, bringing the teleport in rather than the ignite. So presumably they're not fully all in on getting the kill. Yeah, and, and, and that's understandable. You know, you hit level two first, you've got this very pokey comp on bot lane. Like you've got this very uh, pokey uh, lane duo. You just want to get these uh, these trades that kind of make them a little bit scared to come up and actually start trading with you instead. It's a really good harass and it's an important thing. Lux, very good in the early game at just asserting that dominance as a support you know making her out to be the threat that she can it that, that she is yeah luxemir down there with the exhaust again a more defensive option here from gucci gang it's the first gank of sorts comes in from true hunter on the rex side you mentioned before the ability to tunnel in for a play a little taste <laughs> of what's possible yeah for real the level three ganks aren't really too much here i think it's more just to secure um 
just to secure the uh, the advantage in lane, kind of put the fear of God into the Rek'Sai, because, uh, sorry, into the uh, Velkars, just because it is impressive. But yeah, they come straight back in. Wow, it burns both summoners there for Crow. Up in the top mm. lane alone, Eevee Mighty going in for a gank of their own, draws up the TP. Gucci Gang in retreat now, having gotten the summoners of the road. Perhaps as Crow goes back into the mid lane with no summoners, True Hunters, third chimes the charm. Yeah, oh my goodness, that is, uh, True Hunter just absolutely setting up a tent on mid lane there, that was really, really good stuff just to know and to guarantee to get this Velkos down. I do like this, uh, I do like this aggression here from Velkos, uh, sorry, from, there's two Void Champions, like, he getting mixed up. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of aggression here from Rek'Sai, uh, just to make sure that Velkos has this bad lane, because Velkos needs to survive and needs to passively just kind of get to the point where they can punish the solution from range. So if you are constantly in their face, constantly making their life hell, it can be very easy to win that. So maybe they're not too focused on uh, on, on pushing the, the Tristana as, far, as hard as they can. Maybe they're focused on getting the Lucian to an unstoppable point uh, um, instead. So it's a... Uh, it's a bit of a... Uh, it's a little bit of a flexible game plan there, which is which is quite nice. You never want to uh, you never want to put all your eggs in the same basket, right? Well, I mean, you know, that kill has allowed for an early pickaxe pickup mm. for mm. escape in the mid lane. I mean, how important oh, yeah. is it going to be that we've had this force through of the early kill for Resolve Blues mid? Oh, I think it's fantastic. Not only is it an early kill, it's also the first blood, so you get bonus gold for it. Um, the pickaxe gives him an extra 25 damage on every auto attack, including... Oh, sorry, let me just uh, go through this play for you really quick. So as we see here, Rek'Sai already set up the tunnel, baits, uh, waits for Velkos to actually try and stand on top of the tunnel to destroy it, jumps straight through, gets a really nice, uh, gets a really nice flash, and then also um, burns the barrier. You've got a little bit of stuff happening on top lane. Velkos actually comes in to stop the TP from Lucian and dies for it. And, where, and while I think that's smart, you can see that they didn't have vision in the bush where Rek'Sai came from. So it was a really good idea to stop the TP. Even better idea from Rek'Sai to stand around. Oh my god, what, did you see that Grom steal? That was absolutely that was insane. filthy. True Hunter's not even done though. Chasing down EV Mighty, who tries to go through them, trying to bring them back in for the rest of the squad, but they just become another victim instead. What a start here for Resolve Blue. Yeah, and now they can use this priority to take the dragon because they know the enemy jungler's down and they know the bot lane is pushed in. This is really, really nice macro here from like the entire team. True Hunter's uh, Rek'Sai torpedoes as well. Oh my god, just absolute things of beauty. Picking up not only the Gromp, but also the Hecarim. It's this is the kind of this is the kind of start on Rek'Sai that you tell your friends about, you know? This is really good stuff here from them. Yeah, definitely one for the highlight reel. And so far, Resolve Blue, it feels like they've been giving Gucci Gang the opportunity to get into these early fights, and Gucci so far have suffered for it. We're only six minutes in and I Shoot, I think I start to feel those fires burning. The warning klaxons going for Gucci Gang. <laughs> Maybe this first 10 minutes may not be the first 10 minutes they'd hoped for. Yeah, exactly. You know, you look up to the sky and uh, suddenly there's a really big rock that's on fire that seems to be uh, to be getting ever closer. Unfortunately, we don't have a team of five criminals to go and put it out. So we have to instead deal with the, uh, you know, Gucci Gang have to deal with the, the consequences instead. Hopefully they can play from behind and actually survive this charred Scorched Earth Wasteland, which, uh, which Resolve Blue are looking at putting on right now. And they, they've got a good way to do it, you know. Look how pushed in uh, the mid lane is, you know. Lucian's actually doing really good on farm, better than the AD carry, actually. And uh, the gold difference, it's seven minutes. One and a half K gold difference is more than it sounds, you know? Yeah, especially when it's allowing you to get the specific item you're looking for. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we've mentioned the pickaxe. We've now got the long swords in there as well to help pump up the early power. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are coming up to eight minutes, which means we're going to be seeing a Rift Herald coming in shortly. And Resolve Blue, you see here, they've got great positioning to get straight oh, yeah. onto the objective. Fantastic prior. I do like this lane swap that's just coming on right now if you look at the minimap. They've got Ezreal and Lux heading top, and then they've got Gnar heading bottom instead, but they have actually seen that on Resolve Blue and are moving it around. Hold on just one second. Seems like a little yep. bit of tension here in the top lane between Lux and Leona. Counterfeit, yes. you want to take this? 
They're teasing us with the possibility of this happening, but we're actually seeing some pretty good control from the Gucci Gang bottom lane here. They're threatening with their poke again and again. They're using that control ward to secure mm. space. It's not stopping the hell from being started up, though. And EV Mighty for Gucci Gang, their Hecarim, is nowhere near to try and contest. Yeah, they might try and steal. Uh, they might try and get uh, do something with the Ezreal ult here, but really nice to uh, to get the control ward down and then just not do anything about the vision ward, so that they uh, they actually can't see anything to do with the Rift Herald, and that'll secure it for the Rexai right there. Uh, really, yeah. And now, now not only do they have the Rift Herald, they can also utilize it. You know, like getting one, getting the Rift Herald objective. Half of it is the fact that you've killed an epic monster. The second half, or even the second two thirds is the fact that you have that immense amount of tower push. Um, I wonder... I think it's interesting to see where uh, where uh, the True Hunter is going to decide to use this Rift Herald, because the plates are what, are what you use it for at this stage in the game, right? Mm. So you, you basically use it as a gold inflation tool, right? You just say, oh, I want this lane to have a little bit more gold, let's go over here. The True Hunter seems to be coming oh, top. Hold the phone, yeah. We can see there what happens when you're able to get up close and personal with the long range carries of Gucci Gang, just no escape there for Luximir. And True Hunter so far in these first 10 minutes, we've got, yeah, we've got the fire starting, we've got the catch being made, and it's all thanks to True Hunter. 100% kill participation in mm. all four kills so far. Yeah, that's absolutely, you know, this right here as we go into 10 minutes is the exact 10 minutes I was talking about that, uh, that um, uh, Resolve Blue would want, you know? Like, this this is what we're talking about. You know, they've got the first turret, they've managed to get the Rift Herald, they've got the first Drake as well, and, well, f four times zero is technically infinite more infinite <laughs> times more kills. Oh, sorry, make, make that, that five. five. My bad, yeah. <laughs> Mental Boomerang just uh, proving, us, uh, proving us wrong there again. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, this is not the situation you want to be in on uh, Gucci Gang, and like you say, the warning klaxons are very much ringing in all five members' heads right now. I can tell you now. Yeah, and with that kill down in the well, what we call the bottom lane and the transfer top lane is, you've <laughs> now got a death on every single member of the Gucci Gang squad, so they're not winning anywhere at all because True Hunter has been all over the map. We've seen yeah. EV Mighty getting denied on their plays so far in the Hecarim, and mm. maybe just maybe those nerfs were too much. You know, that was the question. Yeah, coming it's into entirely it. possible, yeah. Maybe Rek'Sai is the new Hecarim. Maybe there is no new Hecarim. Maybe Rek'Sai is her own thing, you know? We we, we, we stand a Void Touched Queen. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Even if we've got too many Voids to keep track of, we've yeah. got another Drake <laughs> coming in, as we'll take a look back over that play one of the many True Hunters been making. Yeah, so like I say, True Hunter just coming in and doing exactly what they need to. Leona baits out the flash. Well, Leona uses his stone really, really, really nicely and then gets the flash. They know the flash isn't there, so True Hunter sticks around and then they eventually end up getting the Ezreal as well. But on mid lane, we do also have oh a gosh. little bit of uh, a little bit of scrapping happening here. And it's no good news for Gucci Gang. Eevee Mighty getting taken down incredibly low with the Drake spawned in. So Gucci Gang's gonna struggle to keep their distance from true hunter who's getting up and personal with the new elm guys instantly deleting them that's a second death for them gucci gang yet to even find one of their own mental boomerang goes in for the deletion looks like they might even be thinking about the tower dive here as well culling to try and drive gucci gang away and there's no way resolve even get contested for this trade that kind of play right there is why the name Mental Boomerang stuck in my mind. The moment I saw them, that is why I wanted to see more Resolve Bloom. Uh, Mental Boomerang's top lane potential, if they get ahead, is absolutely nuts. It's so good. I, I, I love to see that play. I think we saw their Akali in the last tournament as well, and again, yeah, just completely dominant. Really ballsy players there as well, you know, going into three champions and still getting a kill, and getting out scot-free. It's just, ugh. Just wonderful stuff. Really good Akali play here. Alright, Shoot. We have entered the wasteland. We have. We're coming close to 15 minutes in, and we've got the 6k advantage for Resolve Oof. Blue. Everything is as they want it to be. It's Tell a me a story. Spin me a tale where Gucci Gang find their way back into the game from here. It's a rough one, you know, you've asked a very high... Oh, hang on a second, I'll... Uh, this gives me some time to think about it. 
I mean, we don't need to think. Whenever true hunters yeah, go for yeah, a deck, we don't need yeah. to think about that because we know it's yeah. going to work. Yeah, it, it's really not a question of if; it's a question of when, right? When it comes to the true hunter, is like it's not. Oh, is true hunter going to kill my lane? It's okay. Where is true hunter right now, and when are they going to kill my lane? Um, but I think the story here is just um, they managed to catch Rexai on unawares. They managed to jump on Rexai with both Not and Hecarim, and Ezreal is there to pick up the kill with True Shot Barrage. Ezreal gets the, sh uh, the shutdown money, pushes himself ahead of Tristana in terms of gold, and then just manages to use that advantage and carry it forward. Um, maybe Velkoz, you know, is able to get a laser across three heroes and gets a triple kill. Maybe Lux is able to get to a combo with that. Like, there are possibilities, but it really is in the realm of waiting for a mistake rather than making a play yourself. Resolve Blue have taken this forward momentum and are clinging onto it for dear life. There is, I, I don't think there's any way in which you can kind of wrest control of this from them unless they were to let it slip. So, I mean, if you are Gucci Gang here, as we see the approach of Gucci, the Clash of Junglers, it's not even close though. Eevee Mighty, with only one death, makes that two against True Hunter with five of their own. New Fangirl tries to go for the play, but there's no backup. So True Hunter just grabs yet another kill so far. Up 10 to zero. Oh yeah. my gosh. You uh, you really hate to see this kind of thing happen because, well, unless of course you resolve blue, in which case you're absolutely loving it because you know easy, easy money, right? But uh, if you uh, if you're a spectator or if you're a Gucci gang, you hate to see this kind of thing happen because it really is just a. If you're ever okay, if it's 15 minutes, you're playing Hecarim and you're ulting defensively to get out, it's not a good omen. You know that is an ultimate you want to use to make space. You want to use it to make plays. You want to use it for the CC and you want to you want to make a kill with it. And not only were you using it to get out, you didn't even survive with it, you know? You've, you've lost your ultimate for what? I mean, this is what we're liking so much for what we're seeing from Resolve Blue. It's they're putting so much pressure onto Gucci Gang. The very tools that would extricate Gucci Gang from this current situation mm -hmm. are being burned just to keep it from getting worse. Yeah, precisely. And, and that's the situation which Resolve Blue have put them in. And it's very smart that they have done that because it reduces their chance of coming back. You know, even here, Mental Boomerang not even going for the tower, just putting the pressure on Noob Fangirl. This is only with two kills as opposed to the six of True Hunter. Mental Boomerang, absolutely monstrous, but they may have stepped too far here, as they will be in trouble. Blast Cone is the thing that saves them as they get across the wall. Double Blast Cone, maybe turning into a triple. They <laughs> make so much distance. Triple Blast Cone, you, you know, you've heard of rocket jumping. Mental Boomerang invented the damn thing. That was absolutely insane. Really good map awareness and map knowledge to know uh, where the Blast Cones were on the Infernal map to be able to get you out of there in such a position. That, I, I gotta say, Mental Boomerang is playing out of their mind right now. A true Hunter, of course, is creating a incredibly rich environment for Mental Boomerang to show exactly what they're capable of. Mm -hmm. I mean, looking at the... Oh, well, we'll just quickly pop across to see Mental Boomerang work their magic once more. Yeah, so we've got Mental Boomerang ignoring the tower completely, using the E backwards to close the distance on Gnar. Gnar knows that they're, uh, that they're not in a good position. They've already used the first charge of the ultimate, and they get them low enough to execute them with the second. And now you see Hecarim, you see Lux. Blast Cone. Oh, there's Ezreal. Blast Cone. Is a Blast Cone here? Blast Cone. And you just don't... You don't have the same... No one has that much chase, right? You've covered <laughs> half the map in like eight seconds, like worldland speed record right there. And I'm trying to figure out with Gucci, with Gucci Gang, you know, we're talking about where does this first kill come from? Seventeen minutes into the game, I, I think I, the most I, likely target is Tristana, right? Because she because she's uh, she has probably the least goal on the team right now, aside from Leona. But you're not. I don't think it's a realistic target to kill Leona just because of how tanky she is, and the fact that she has a few, quite a few tank stats in her item build right now. The windows of opportunity for Gucci Gang to somehow pull off a miracle are closing further and further. 17 minutes in, we're almost 10k ahead. Resolve Blue, they've had total great control! Ooh, they were, they were waiting my goodness. for that, that true shot barrage. That was so close. That was so close. Fantastic, yeah, perfect smoke for True Hunter there. 
There's the attempted tower dive. New Elm almost gets killed. No. Mental Boomerang comes through. Gets the double. You can see with the golden mats are popping up there. This has been such a one-sided game. Resolve Br Blue's kill gold is being reduced on the 0-4 Ezreal. Yeah, that is absolutely awful. You know, and, and just look at the Ezreal's item build at, at 18 and a half minutes here. It's, it's the kind of thing you'd expect five minutes ago. It's just, he's had a really, you know, New Elm Guys has had a really bad lane on this, uh, and a really bad game on this Ezreal, which is just unfortunate. But, oh, hang on, the True Hunter actually getting shut down by the laser! That's the first time I think we've seen the laser all game long, but it's a kill. Stratus Panda goes under the tower, and it's almost going to get caught, forced to flash away. Mental Boomerang is off to the side. Stratus Panda just avoids a laser to the face. Gucci Gang, they're on the board now, shoot! He did it! It finally happened! I can, I can officially say that I was wrong in my three times assessment. It is actually 15 times. Which is, you know, it's still a multiple of three, so it's not that wrong. It's not that wrong, right? I think <laughs> any mathematician would struggle to disagree with you. But we now live in a world where Gucci Gang, they pulled off a play. It's not impossible. Mental Boomerang, though, is ridiculously far ahead. Luxmere is going to be put up as the sacrifice to keep New Elm on the map. Yeah, it's a... Uh... It's it, it's rough, you know. You get a kill on. They got a kill on True Hunter because True Hunter got a little bit greedy, and Belkos was really good at. Oh, hang on a second. There's more action. <laughs> oh my gosh, you know, Shoot, I'm starting to think, as we see Mental Boomerang just go in and delete the entire map again and again, that maybe for Gucci Gang heading into game number two, they don't want to play a strategy where they, mm. where having the opposing team get up in their face is a lose condition for them. Well, up in their face is definitely where uh, is definitely where Mental Boomerang has the most real estate right now, right? Like, she, she, she has built an entire house in the enemy's business, you know? Like, it's uh, <laughs> it is, uh, really difficult for them to actually do anything here. And as you can see, this is a really good engage on True Hunter, like, to use the ultimate there to get the damage on Ezreal. It was a call of the, the entrance in and also the entrance out through the Lux. It was really good stuff. Entrance out. I could have just said exit. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> that's what we call that's what we call the uh the premium yeah. uh, the premium yeah yeah premium exactly Entr yeah it's the it's the i need more words for my essay <laughs> um, well the no i don't think there's enough words to cover how dominant resolve blue has been yeah, we, well, I mean, we've seen that one slip the baron now started up the gold lead I mean, is absolutely ludicrous i mean i can think of three words which accurately describe it if you ask me and those words are brutal savage wrecked Oof, and it's gonna happen all over again. Resolve Blue, they're so far ahead, they can take the objective and take the team fight at the same time. Baron goes down. Such Crow is gonna be able to fall back. They have got the life on this integration ray. They get the kill, but at the cost of the rest of the team, New Elm is the only one left standing. Can they somehow salvage? They are doing a decent amount of damage. Can they keep up? Escape is such a nice move away. from Escape there. That was such a nice little, like, little stutter step juke. That was, oh, so good to dodge the Ezreal Q. That's just, mm, wow. I love that kind of, like, high, I love that high mechanical level of play when it comes to positioning, especially on someone like Lucian. It's beautiful. New Ellen is going to get chased down and knocked up oh, and deleted no. by True oh, Hunter. Lucian didn't even get the assist. It was all oh. over too quick. It was too quick, yeah. He, he even threw in his W to try, and, to try and snatch an assist or maybe even the killer just didn't get anything for it. Yeah, I gotta say, 22 to 2. It's a satisfying number, but only from a numerical standpoint. And yeah, as you can see here, what I like here is the rest of the team jump over the wall and actually try and get something done here. Tristana goes over, Lucian goes over, Lucian goes over all this. That's uh, why Leona goes over all this. Meanwhile, True Hunter only has one thing on her mind and it's Baron. They get it and then they move forward instead. You know, look at this, uh, look at this slow mo right here. Wrencher jumping forward, grabbing the stun just so that they can guarantee the kill. It sets up a very nice lifeform disintegration ray here, but it's still enough to make it so that they get all three kills there. True Hunter was not in the ultimate and has the space that she needs to push that advantage further and just decimate the team fight. Certainly a very strong start to the day for Resolve Blue as Eevee Mighty tries to force the play, gets deleted for her troubles. Chase now back onto the inhibitor tower. 
There is, of course, the Baron buff still in play. The minions mm. have been kept at bay, but that's not just the Baron we have to worry about. There's also the Infernal Soul there for the taking. <laughs> Yeah, and this is the thing, is Infernal Soul is definitely the final nail in the coffin here. If they weren't winning the teamfights before, they definitely will now. That extra burst damage across five different champions is just going to be all she wrote, I think. You know, Mental Boomerang is already out-damaging their entire health bars with even half a combo. So it's like, uh, <laughs> it's like, what do you really do here? You know, you've got a bunch of bonus damage, you've got Baron buff to push the inhibs and the towers. It's very much the beginning of the end here for Gucci Gang. I mean, yeah, while we've got the two kills in here for such crow, we've also got Azonius as well. So maybe they won't be dived again and again. Actually, maybe a step too far for Resolve Blue. There's a level of disintegration rate that's shut down. That's a pickup for Gucci Gang. Resolve Blue, we have found, Shoot. We have found the edge of their overconfidence. Yeah, that was a really nice. Uh, that was a really nice opportunity there that they were very smart to take. But the thing is, is, is can they actually do anything with it? Oh my goodness. Mental Boomerang goes under the Nexus Towers, says this is how it's done. But everyone else on Resolve Blue just comes in, plucks the lives of Gucci Gang away, and that's two downed inhibitors. There are at least three members of Gucci Gang to stop a finish here, but it's not looking any better than it was before. Yeah, no, this is the thing is, um, they found a really good opportunity, and if the game wasn't already, you know, Look at the gold difference here. That's all I really need to say is just look at the gold difference. If I'm, if my math isn't isn't wrong, is that a seventeen thousand nearly gold difference? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Just short by a hundred gold. Yeah, that is absolutely nuts. That is, that is so much. And, and at this point, even with a fantastic opportunity that you know, such Crow Mike Wow has uh, been able to pick up and 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 analyze and find the right timing they, they 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 watched for the door to open and were put their foot in it as soon as they could um but it just isn't really enough at this stage you know lucian still has baron buff or well still had baron buff it was expired, it's expired by now they still have they still have the infernal soul they still have two inhibs down and now you resolve blue are just gonna keep up this offensive mental boomerang you get four levels on the on the ezreal he's basically a range creep to her that's, I mean, this is cr absolutely crazy. Mental Boomerang, very much the galaxy <laughs> racer of this game, looming large across the entire map as Gucci Gang try and hold on with everything they have against an incredibly strong Resolve Blue. Evie Mighty it tries to go for the play, doesn't land. They're going to get deleted once again, and Gucci, they've been trying to tr play any kind of gamble they can find, but it's not working out. Mental Boomerang is part of the squad, which means Resolve Blue are overwhelmingly strong. Yeah, I, I just want to—I just want to mention here. Do you see that aura around Mental Boomerang? Around Mental Boomerang, she picked up a blue pot. She well, what else are you going to spend pot. your money on at this point? Yes, yeah, yeah, no, that's just so like. That wait, wait a so second. Much. Life on disintegration, Ray. Resolve Blue, they did step a bit too far. True Hunter is down low. Nexus Towers are going to fall. At least a Gucci Gang get to end this one out on a fight. Drathus Panda goes in. The Ezreal has been deleted. Resolve Blue, they get the game. Gucci Gang at least get a fight. But at the end, 28 to 5. She said the goal lead absolutely ludicrously over the top. Yeah, that was uh, that was definitely something right there. It was a really rough game for uh, for Gucci Gang to actually uh, play in there. Resolve Blue had a game plan in their mind, and they immediately took it, and they were playing around it the entire game. And then just, oh my god, it was an absolute slaughter fest as soon as uh, as soon as the True Hunter and Mental Boomerang got their space to do what they needed to. And then by the time that they were just going absolutely crazy at last Tristana to get the farm and the resources that she needs to come online. And I gotta say, big, 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 big respect to such Mac, uh, to such uh, such crow such crow Mac Wow, I think is their name. It's a difficult one to remember. Uh, yes. Uh yeah. Um Big respect to them for not just giving it up, right? You know, they were looking for those lasers the entire time, right? They were definitely trying to set it up. I could, I could almost hear them on voice chat just going, you know, okay, go, go. I've got a good laser. I've got, a good, you know, if the two of them are down, we can do this kind of thing. But unfortunately, too little, too late. 
I do think it speaks well of Gucci Gang, though, that exactly as you said, that even under the worst possible circumstances, they were still trying to make plays yeah. up until yeah. the very end of the game. I mean, that feels like that's a mentality that's going to serve them extremely well in those more winnable games down the road. Yeah, oh, for sure, for sure. Um, the game is never over until the Nexus explodes, 100%. Um, I believe that in every single game of competitive 5v5 League of Legends. If every single person is in, is, in, is in communications with each other and knows how to play the game, the game is never over. The only time where the game is over before the Nexus explodes is if someone goes AFK, someone doesn't know how to play the champion, or someone isn't communicating with their team. And in 5v5 competitive League of Legends, none of those situations will ever take place. So I truly do commend them for having the mentality, because that is crushing. That is a moral guard break right there. That, sorry, moral, mental guard break right there. Uh, to get destroyed in your first game but to be able to shake it off to still try and make plays with the uh with the hecarim in the end game there to still put up the fight even when they're pushing your nexus towers and they're and they're fountain diving you i like that i like that a lot i think it'll do them well uh in the next game and hopefully through the rest of the tournament but gucci gang i i believe in you i believe in you i want to see you guys do well take this Take this, learn it, understand what you've got to let Resolve Blue not do, and then push into the second game and do what needs to be done. That's, there you go. that's my message to that team. It's a rousing speech for Gucci gang there. <laughs> They're absolutely going to need it. So we've just got the one quarterfinal series for you guys today. We'll bring you the semifinals and the grand finals tomorrow. So for Gucci gang, if they can't get this series back under control, mm. then it will be a two and zero. But hopefully we get to see all three games. This has been the Hunter's Trials for May. We will be back in just a few short minutes time for our second and potentially last game of the day. If it's anything like game number one, Resolve Blue, Gucci gang, round two coming up.
Welcome back, everyone, to the Huntress Trials for May. My name is Kind of Fit, joined by Shoot once again, and we live in the aftermath of a truly shocking first game of our only series today in the quarterfinals. A resolve Blue Gucci Gang. It was quite an eye opener, Shoot. Oh, yeah, it definitely was. I just had to, I was thinking of rubbing my eyes for a second there. I, I think my contacts were a little bit out of focus when I was looking at you. But um, yeah, it was a massive eye opener to just how much Resolve Blue have obviously gone away and uh, taken, you know, taken their loss last tournament, uh, just, you know, <laughs> like a woman, if you will, and just uh, learned from it, internalized it, and come back with full force because they were absolutely disgusting in that game. It was insane how dominant they were really 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 good stuff gucci gang as well still keep it still keeping up the fight you know still still putting it in there you know as we were saying last time you know they were still looking to make plays even when it seemed like there was absolutely no hope left whatsoever i'm excited for this next game and i'm excited to get into the draft it was really really fun as you're saying you know gucci gang they showed a great amount of tenacity there to still find kills in a incredibly hostile environment set up there mm, mm. for them i mean of course you know it would be remiss to not mention specifically the two standout players on a standout team resolve blue the true hunter setting up for the early game strength mental boomerang though completely dominating the late game oh yeah just without without question they were doing really strong in the early game um just you know on the true hunter like the true hunter was definitely the star of the first uh 12 minutes of that game which then allowed the other laners to to, to push forward you know uh M mental boomerang was again absolutely dominant on that akali i can definitely see akali getting banned in the first phase here uh just because if i was gucci gang i definitely would want to deal with it again um and also i think it'll be uh i i think uh you know it also allowed uh also allowed Stratos Panda, the ADC, to, uh, to to shine on the Tristana in the late game as well there. So, yeah, really, really good stuff from Resolve Blue. I want to see how Gucci Gang can, uh, can come back at this. If you look at the bands here, just because we didn't talk about it last time. So mm. the three bands on Gucci Gang are Kane, Bard, and Akali. And the uh, three bands on Resolve Blue have been Volibear, Urgot, and Gnar. So they've banned out the Gnar this time. Maybe Mental Boomerang didn't is not is maybe that's not a good matchup for them maybe they don't like it yeah, they seem to it, do fine like, on the akali <laughs> well maybe just with the akali out of the mix that's going to be a little bit trickier so we've got true hunter coming back in on the rec side once again the tristana returning you from the previous game for stratus panda as well so even with the bands we're seeing mostly similar stuff from resolve blue gucci gang though they're the ones looking to change things up mm -hmm. well you know repeating the same thing over and over again definition of insanity you know um you definitely want to switch things up just to give yourself more of a chance and kind of you know well obviously if you get stomped like that the tactic isn't working right so why stick to it I like the uh, the Zaya pick. I think the extra invul the invulnerability on the ultimate and also just the range and CC that she provides for herself. Really nice in combination with Lux and also really good at keeping herself alive. Maybe uh, maybe the new Ellen guys on the Ezreal last game just you know wasn't didn't didn't feel safe enough into that team. So this could actually be quite nice here. So are we actually going to get to see a Gwen? I think this might even be the very first time. I've seen them picked into competitive play, and it will be. Yeah. Okay. Well, Something I can see new. it. Into, I'll be honest. Garen is a really nice pick once you've just got stomped on. Like, if you know that the enemy top laner is a problem, Garen is a really nice pick because Garen is one of those champions that just does what he does, and it doesn't matter if he loses lane, wins lane. He will always be Garen. He will always be tanky. He will always have the on-hit silence. He will always spin on you. And most importantly, he will always have his ultimate. And that's always something you've got to be careful of, right? You need to lock down that Garen and kill him before he can actually execute the person who he's trying to execute. And that is where Gwen comes in. Gwen is really good at sustained trades. You know, she has uh, fantastic uh, scaling as uh, as the trades kind of go on because of her uh, of her. I think it's her Q. I forget. I know what her skills do. I'm just not sure what the buttons are. Um, you know the one where she she does like all those little snips with her scissors. Oh yes, it's literally called snip snip. Is it actually called snip snip? Wow. It is. Riot. I'm, I'm I know. 
two hundred um, years. Is that a long time? <laughs> but yeah, uh, it's uh, it's one of those things where she can do more snips depending on how uh, how many uh, is it auto attacks that she's done in a certain time. Uh, the so uh, she when she attacks, she gets. I'm just checking the specific wording here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you get a stack of snippy for Ooh, six snippy. seconds. That's a good and passive. then you can cash in those stacks to be able to, as you say, snip rapidly, repeatedly. Yeah. Uh, which is magic. It's magic damage, and if you can hit them with the center of the snip, it's true damage as well. Yeah, and that right there, magic damage is good enough against Garen because Garen likes to build armor, right? Magic dam and also, you know, building magic resist against this team. You know, they don't have a magic damage dealer here. This is a game where you want to stack armor. But the thing is, is, is they don't really have characters that want to stack armor on the side of Gucci Gang Lux. The only armor item you realistically get is maybe an early Seekers into Zonia's. Azir, you can say the same thing. Zaya, um, I'm pretty... Does Guardian Angel still get armor? <laughs> uh, Immortal uh, Shield Bow. So. Yeah, Immortal Shield Bow is probably what you want. And then the Guardian Angel, that's really your only armor item. Uh, see above on Kindred, right? So you can pretty safely pick an all-physical comp here. And Garen building Magic Res to deal with the magical damage from Gwen, not only does it suck because sometimes it's true damage, it also sucks because you're not getting any additional value out of it. And like, you know, oh, you're negating Nautilus's damage. Like, oh yeah, it's totally worth the money, right? Um, but yeah, it's just one of those things where you get, you know, the more you fight Garen, the more you kind of stick in there and hit him, the better he is, but then the better Gwen is. And that bonus true damage, you know, if you get eight snips on him, that's a lot, you know, and it's a lot in a very short, in, in very quick succession as well. I think Garen versus Gwen, it's going to be an interesting matchup to say the least, I'll say that. Well, let's also cover the, the teams of the Hulk. I think we've we've been yes, so yes. entranced by Gwen. Sorry, um, the, the Gwen pick. It's like oh new new champion. Know, it's, it's an attention grabber. So yeah, let's yeah. talk let's talk about the previous game. So Resolve mm -hmm. Blue, they're able to set up the plays early on thanks to True Hunter. They mm -hmm. got the snowball rolling. Mental Boomerang took over the game. Based on what you've seen from Resolve Blue for game number two, is that the game plan again? Um, it definitely seems like it. Um, they've got Lee Sin in the mid lane, which is a really interesting one. I've not seen it. I've seen Lane Sin before. I saw Lane Sin in top lane uh, a few days ago, again, watching NA. Um, and it actually performed pretty decently. I was I was definitely of the in the camp where Lane Sin is a trend. It's not really something that, you know, it's something that people are trying. It's a meme at the moment. It's not really something that you can consistently pick. He's a much better jungler. But honestly... I saw it in top, and it did surprisingly well. Maybe it's a good matchup into Azir, because it was picked last. Resolve Blue's last pick was this Lee Sin mid into the Azir. So maybe Escape is really is really confident on this. Maybe they're memeing. You know, who knows? Who knows on this on this mid lane? Um, but Rek'Sai, the true hunter, and Tristana on the Stratos Panda, again, the ones to watch. Mental Boomerang as well, but you know we've we've talked about that we've talked about the Gwen matchup. Uh, I think it's going to be a very similar game plan here of just go in, get that early aggression, use it. Lee Sin is very mobile. That's why you use him as a jungler? He's got ward hops. He's got uh, he's got dashes in the form of his uh, sonic wave and resonating strike. There's just so much that you can actually do with it. It's really nice. And Nautilus again is also a really good dive champion and is a really good aggressive champion that can just go in with hooks and set up for this Tristana. There's a lot of peel and a lot of mobility. I think it might just be too much for Gucci Gang to actually deal with. The Kindred, I like. Well, yes, but let's let's it's... let's take a chance to talk about Gucci Gang overall. Yeah. Because, you know, obviously, based off that previous game, they are the ones under the most pressure to try and adapt. Oh, yeah, they are. Rather than playing the microscope. same game. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what are the, you know, you mentioned the Kindred as potentially being a focus point mm. here. Like, what are the big places where Gucci Gang can try and set up a very different game two than they had in game one? Well, you pick a Kindred in order to bully the enemy jungler, right? You never pick a Kindred and play passive, you because that way you're not really playing Kindred. What you want is the Kindred marks. You want the ability to not only counter jungle and shut down the enemy's jungle, but also to push yourself ahead faster than you would have if you were counter jungling on anyone else. Um, and this is where I like it, but it's a risk. 
We know that the True Hunter is not only really strong as a jungler, but also is comfortable and practiced on this Rek'Sai. I have not seen Gucci Gang's Kindred. I don't know, I don't think they've played it too much after checking their OP.GG, but it's... It's one of those ones where if it works and they're able to shut down the True Hunter, maybe the House of Cards topples, you know? Maybe the True Hunter is the foundation for Resolve Blue. But... It, it, it's it's a risky play, and I like them taking the risk. I like them analyzing. It, it shows me that they've definitely taken things in from last game. I'm just wondering if it'll actually work. Yes, well, we'll see if we can add adaptability to tenacity as a list <laughs> of merits of Gucci Gang. Because you're right, it feels like an incredible thing to do to say, okay, you know, we had there's one player in the last game who basically carried the entire thing on their back, and this time we're going to try and take them down face to face. Gucci Gang resolve blue in the Huntress Trials here for May into game number two of our quarterfinals. Again, if you're just joining the stream, you only get to access the prize pool for, the, for this tournament if you make it through to day two. If Gucci Gang can't win here, then they will walk away with nothing. Yeah, it really is, you know, it, it's not in the quarterfinals, but in, in a sense, it is all on the line on this game, right? You know, Gucci Gang, like I said before, under the microscope for this one, and uh, seems to be some kind of invade. Oh my god, what a hook! Yeah, new Ellen, guys, I think it's going to save their summoners as Resolve oh. Blue. Very pleased with themselves to grab hold that first blood that ultimately went on to Wrencher. Maybe not ideal. Uh, but it's a strong hit to Gucci Gang uh, right still, out of the game. Yeah, it's still a 500k gold lead before the game's even started. You know, it's a 500k? Oh my god. A 500 <laughs> oh, wow. gold lead, my bad, sorry. <laughs> I mean, it's... Gold lead. Yeah, that's pretty big. <laughs> it's going to be worth that much if Resolve Blue can take that and take over the map, and that's exactly what they're doing right now. They should drive Gucci Gang out of the bottom side of the map, though, to take the red buff and maybe even be able to go for a three buff here on ev mighty who's supposed to be dominant early yeah this is uh this is the thing about kindred is if you know you're playing into a kindred and you know your way around the jungle well you can very easily counter jungle her and that is the worst one you know while kindred wants to play aggressive and wants to do a lot of uh, aggressive jungling the worst thing about that is that she's very glass cannon in that regard if you take mm. from her jungle, she will feel it a lot harder than a lot of other jungles will. We'll keep our eyes out on how Eevee Mighty manages to work through. It's actually going to switch to Resolve's red buff. We can see that True Hunter is ex anticipating this happening. It's there right away, sees that the red buff is moving. We have got priority for Gucci Gang in the mid lane. This here could come up, but it looks like ultimately Eevee Mighty will back off and concede. They're just not going to get a red buff this time around. That, is, that hurts so much on uh, that hurts so much on Kindred. That like red buff not only does it give you additional damage that you need for your clear because it's on hit and Kindred is very good at playing on hits. Um, it also gives you health regen in the jungle, which means that her clear is going to be more dangerous as well. This is absolutely horrible news for Eevee Mighty, and it might just put her out of the game this early. Yeah, we knew it was a gamble to go up against the strongest point of Resolve Blue with their jungler. As new Elam gets caught out here, takes a pretty nasty trade, but does hold on to the summoners again. You see the new Elam, even when under pressure, doesn't panic flash. Yeah, no, for, for real. I, I gotta say, I like new Elam's temperament here. Didn't panic flash before. Oh, hang on a second, True Hunter. Such Crow manages to get away from True Hunter's early play. As EV Mighty, you see they've got the mark on the wreck side there. But Mental Boomerang and Escape are there too early. EV Mighty hasn't got anything left. Manages to just create enough distance. And True Hunter showing why this was a risk to go up against them. Going under the tower and locking down the kill. Yeah, just understanding the damage numbers there. That that right there is literally just understanding of how League of Legends works on a fundamental level. They knew that they could take that tower shot in order to dive. Hang on a second, there's some aggression on bot lane. It's very close. Stratos Panda actually taking a ton of damage. Forced to burn through the heal there as Wrencher buys time and burns their ignite. Gucci Gang's bottom lane, we saw them before. They had the temperament, but now they've got to deal with a rogue Rek'Sai of True Hunter coming in and trying to make sure the Gucci Gang don't get their heads above water. 
Yeah, no, that's really nice. You know, uh, I gotta say, True Hunter's positioning has been absolutely phenomenal here. They've been exactly where they need to be every single time. They were on mid in order to make something happen on such Chrome Mac. Wow. And then Gwen's coming down to make sure that they have something going on with this Skull Crab instead in the fight. So that they have three champions here, you know. It's always three to two. They always have the outpositioning, the outnumbering. You know, it's 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 just really good macro from uh, from the side of Resolve Blue here. And yeah, this that is... tower dive was just beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And it feels like it's entirely the opposite of what Gucci Gang would be hoping for. You know, if Eevee Mighty was getting support from Noob Fangirl and Crow, you know, they were getting the three versus two, the three versus ones even. They could yeah. be getting those Kindred Marks stacking up and not, as they are right now, falling behind in levels. Yeah, and this is where Team Synergy comes into it so much because you can tell that the level of communication and the level of uh, and the level of understanding of like where uh, how each player on the team plays and where they are on the map at certain times is so different, right? You can tell that it's on a completely other level on uh, Resolve Blue because Gwen actually pushed in her lane super hard so that she could have the space to do so. She knew Garen couldn't come down because the lane was so far pushed in. So that in itself is uh, is doing that. We are looking at a pause right now, though. Just going to try and get production to let us know what's happening here. All right, we'll be back in with the action as soon as we can. But sign up until this point, a couple of kills already locked down for resolved. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um. It's going to be an interest. This is this is this is framing up to be a very similar game to last game, and that is uh, it, it's a little bit. It's a little bit disappointing, I'm not going to lie. I, I don't want to call it too early, but it's this kind of thing is a huge mental issue when it comes to uh, when it comes to Gucci Gang here, because you've gone, you know, the, the very classic mental mental state to put yourself in is, right, first game, you know, warming up, you know, it's, it's, it's the first game of the day, first game of the tournament, a little bit shaky, whatever, next game. And then the second game starts exactly the same way. And you start to think, oh no. You know? Well then I will I will put it <clears throat> I will put it to you, shoot. What do we need to see here uh from Gucci Gang? What's you know, what are the steps they need to be doing? What specific things would you hope that they will be doing in the next few minutes once we get back to the game in order to stop that snowball from rolling? Quite simple, play from behind. Just take the farm disadvantage if you absolutely have to. Treat Garen as a lost cause because Garen just like you can't let Gwen get ahead. Um, just because one, Gwen is disgusting if she does get that advantage, and two, uh, we know how dominant Metal Boomerang is when they get ahead. They are the not the star of the show, but definitely like something that is terrifying, right? So you need to kind of you know put up defensive vision, make Ooh, sure that hold the phone yeah, that one. It looks like there's going to be contestation for that spotlight as Wrencher comes in to help escape lockdown their second kill. Good grief. Resolve so, Blue. You talked about that map control. They are all over the map right now. Yeah. So this is what I was... This actually goes into what I was talking about here. You need to put up defensive vision. You need to be communicating whenever anyone is missing from anywhere on the map, right? Azir's got the... Azir uh, doesn't see Lee Sin in lane. They need to be communicating that Lee Sin's missing so that Garen doesn't push up. But it's just too much already. New fan girl. Yeah, just... But you've got three people, yeah. including Leeson the mid laner. Behind, Leeson, Leeson came from behind the tower there, but but this is the thing I'm talking about. Azir sees that, is it, that Leeson's missing, they need to call that out, they need to tell everyone to play from behind. And this is the thing, is you can't get too cocky, you can't get into a position where you are pushed forward without any vision, because they will take this advantage and they will just run with it. The, the, the best way to stop a snowball is to just melt the snow. You know, don't give them anything to snowball with. You know, just 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 kind of shut them down and then try and play passively. You know, like I was talking about before, not very many kills. Objectives are going here or there, but the overall kill advantage isn't there. But that was a really nice. Yeah, shuffle. Empress Divide pushes escape into position. EV Mighty is low, gets the shutdown. That's huge. Ooh. True Hunter gets the kill back, and the rest of Resolve Blue, all four remaining members. Converge to make that a double kill and a resolve favor trade into the Drake. Well, the one thing which I can say here is that they had to commit a lot of champions to that kill. And 
they did manage to lose someone for it. That is actually quite good. This puts Azir in a really nice situation, or in a much better situation than they were before. The only problem with that is they don't really mind using the space because it allows them to convert into a very easy dragon. So even when they're using more resources than they need to, they're still doing it in a in a, in a productive manner. You know, they burned the TP, they wanted to make sure this fight was ending in both champions dead, regardless of what happened. Both of bot lane came up, Gwen's TP was used, only person who wasn't there was the mid laner. I mean, you know, this does at least reflect back on some of what we've been praising from the Gucci gang. Is that you know such crow even in a game that had gone so poorly from the from the off was still ready to seize the opportunity to mm -hmm. make the play and get themselves on the board. Oh yeah, got, gotta love such crow's mentality. Oh, honestly, such crow and new alum guys are doing absolutely like you can tell that they are still playing this game like it's incredibly winnable, and that is something to be that's something to be uh, to be commended for sure. And something we can see developing between the various different tournaments that we see these teams in. Certainly Resolve Blue, they've shown a lot of why they are one of the teams we're most excited about seeing it here today. Certainly they've given us a tremendous amount of competitive matches so far as True Hunter and Eevee Mighty about to walk right into the face of each other. At least it doesn't go right into the bush. But no, you're stepping too close to True Hunter. There's no ultimate known Lamsha spite for Eevee Mighty, which means their flash is burned and it's a tower dive! Again, just wonderful understanding, you know, they could get the tower dive and they could run out. They knew that there were no champions nearby to capitalize, they knew that they were going to take two tower shots and they knew there weren't enough health to tank that and get out. Everest oh, might catch us two in the mid lane, but escape with the resonating strike, able to Ooh. keep the distance closed. Crow survives against two though, but Stratos panned down the bottom side, will be able to dance through the tower aggro and take down Elam. No more summoners left for the Gucci gang bottom lane and the tower seems like it's going to be following shortly after. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Lux has just hit six though, so that, the threat of the laser is online for that Tristana. But yeah, just looking here, because we didn't really catch the beginning of that fight, Stratos Panda, you know, uh, sorry, Wrencher, just settling in with the, with the Nautilus ult, guaranteeing the kill uh, and guaranteeing the positioning. Really good usage and understanding of the Tristana ultimate in order to pick up the kill there. Because how many times, ladies and gentlemen, in your solo queue games have you seen the Tristana ulti and then oh oh wow okay well apparently we I was gonna are say, and then lose the kill but like that kill definitely wasn't lost. Well, we've got ourselves a move now from Resolve Blue switching away from just playing kills to mm. more on the objectives. Yeah, we're ten minutes in. We've got the close to 4,000 gold advantage and the Herald for Resolve Blue. But we've got a couple of kills in here for Gucci Gang, so it is going better than it was in game one. Yeah, much better. And, and you can see that just because they actually have some scores on the board and they're on relevant champions as well. Like, you want it on the Azir, you want it on the, uh, you want it on the Kindred. Their scores are still negative, but they're in a better position than they were last game. And that's something to, to talk about here. I will say that such Chrome Mac WoW, I think Azir might be one of their comfort picks because they are playing mm. this champion with a level of skill and precision that only Azir mains do, right? The shuffles are always on point, everything else is just gravy. You know, the sh they... I just want to say, do you see that resonating strike dodge? Like like where he he, um, he waited for the least... sorry, uh, such Chrome Mac WoW waited for the least in to go with the resonating strike for him, to, uh, for, him for Azir to then jump the wall. So that the rest yes. of the strike would go to where he was and not where he and not where he is. That was so good. That is the kind of thing that Azir means, you know, no. Because I expected them to follow the wall, but it just didn't. It was really good stuff. It gave him the distance that, was, that allowed him to survive. Yeah, I mean, and that's the whole thing, isn't it? You know, oh wait a second, mental boomerang takes the kill there against <sighs> Noob Fangirl. They are of course ahead. But that's their first kill locked down. Then the bottom side, True Hunter, is going to just summon the Rift Herald yeah. in a new Elam's face because they've got no support left in. We have got Eevee Mighty coming in from the side. Maybe catch and remove the Herald before the tower is taken in its entirety. But Resolve Blue, they've got the numbers down here. 30 seconds to the next Drake. First tower will fall. Resolve Blue's bottom lane is going through. Mental Boomerang is getting a ton of plates in the top. The snowball is threatening to overwhelm again. 
Yeah, it's it's happening, and this is the thing, is they're pushing in bot lane, they're doing all of this, they have four champions down here, and it's perfect timing. The tempo is immaculate, because they can immediately set up for this Jake. Looking at the replay, you've got a fantastic engage from Wrencher, and then Stratos Panda follows up like it was their job. But there's a fight happening with Drake, hold on. The Gucci gang, they don't have as much long-range power as they did before, but they have still got the final spark from Loxemir up and available to maybe attempt for a steal. Drake is going low, but yes, the smite. So far, Resolve Blue, they've not given Gucci gang too much of an opportunity to get in and steal these objectives. Yeah, well see, that's the thing about the new smite changes, is that steals are so much harder nowadays as long as the... Well, if the enemy jungler has smite, right, because it now does 900 damage. And it, do, it doesn't scale per level like it did before, so... How many, how many spells at this stage in the game do 900 damage, right? Not many. That's, we do have Eevee Mighty. They're actually able to use the Lambshire Spite to avoid getting killed mm. this time round. And I guess Resolve Blue, we're doing so many plays pre-6. We haven't had a chance so much to talk about some of these ultimates coming in. Yeah, you know, sure. Debris Divide, for sure. But that's the first mm -hmm. Lambshire Spike we see negate a play from Resolve. Oh, yeah, and that's really nice, because Lambshire Spike is a fantastic uh, play to kill aggression, right? And that is exactly what Resolve have done. This is another reason I like the Kindred, but I don't really want to talk about it too much in draft, because it's not really... It wasn't really too relevant to the, uh, to the strategy of the game as a whole. Um, but I really, really like it, because... It kind of gives Kindred a button that she can just kind of press as a panic to prevent her from dying. And the, the thing is about Resolver's Aggression is they commit like three champions every time they try and kill someone. If they don't get a kill, that's wasted space. Yes, I suppose that's yes, that's the weakness that's there for Resolve Blue. Commit resources, you've got to get some kind of payoff, mm -hmm. or you're giving up the rest of your map presence for nothing. As such, Crow almost gets caught by Stratus Pandas there, mm -hmm. and escape, but manages to get away again. Every second bought by Gucci Gang is a second that Resolve Blue's lead doesn't grow significantly. Yeah, precisely. And I, I gotta say, Resolve Blue are playing like absolute... They're playing insanely, as they have been in the previous game, but Gucci Gang, you can tell that they are trying to rise to meet the bar. Such Crow can't stand up against the bottom lane of Resolve Blue under the tower, as Mental mm. Boomerang looks to take down tower number two. Now going to go for the 1v1 with Noob Fango. We can see the damage of the Gwen is too much when Mental Boomerang mm. is this far ahead. Yeah, Noob Fango getting a little bit trigger happy with the ultimate there, needed to wait for another auto attack or two, um, just wanted to try and get the kill, and I respect it, honestly, it's one of those things that you just gotta, you kinda gotta let it rip, uh, but it just was a little bit too early, and that's the second time now, I think, that uh, Noob Fango has used an ult and not gotten the kill. Resolve gonna go under the tower once again, all the outer towers are down, True Hunter almost taken down by the tower damage itself, but... Ultimately, it's not enough resolve. They're certainly sending a message to the rest of the competition that this is going to be their Huntress Trials. We, we certainly <laughs> yeah. know they know what to do with the lead. Oh, definitely. It's a really interesting... Uh, it, it's it's really nice to see um, Gucci Gang in this game, though. You can tell, like I said, that they are leveling up their plays. They are trying to play around resolve. But it seems like resolve are just too... Too far forward. You know, they're too, they're too, they're too aggressive. They're, they're too good at doing exactly what they want to do, and it's difficult for Gucci Gang to raise enough. They've definitely improved over the first game, and I think that much is obvious, even you know, to someone who barely knows anything about League of Legends. But this, this next game, even if they have improved and even if they have leveled themselves up, have they, have they gone far enough? I mean, that's a big concern, you know, for all of these teams is, you know, this is gonna, you know, while this tournament today is, of course, they're gonna give their all to it. To be a team of players is to take the long view, that development as a team, you know, between this tournament and the next tournament and the tournaments to come. You know, they all stand in the shadow of Resolve Blue's dominance this time round, but the Gucci gang, every step matters. Yeah, for certain, and, and... Gucci Gang need to, need to keep that mentality of they are waiting for their big break at the moment, right? Like, they are waiting for the huge mistake. They're waiting for the time where they can pull themselves back into this game. Because if they if they don't keep themselves anticipating that moment, then the game might as well just already be lost. 
You're right, and we'll keep looking to see. Because right now, Gucci Gang, you know, they've bought themselves time into this game. We're getting close to 20 minutes. The goal lead is huge from Resolve Blue, but yeah. you're right in thinking that it, you know, com certainly compared to the first game, it doesn't feel anywhere near as much of a done deal. No, not in, not in the slightest. I think in, in a vacuum, you know, if you're just watching, if you're just joining us for the second game, you can definitely maybe think, oh, what are these casters talking about? This is obviously so over. But really, in comparison to the last game, oh, hang on a second, True Hunter. New Elm will be able to buy themselves a few moments of extra space, getting chased across the wall and round the corner. They don't die, though. Lamsha Spite again negates the play. Even Mighty goes across the wall right into True Hunter. That's unfortunate. New Fangirl locked in place and deleted a well-played fight from Gucci Gang, but they're just too far behind. True Hunter, Strellis Panda actually gets pulled under the tower and deleted. That is at least something back for Gucci Gang, but it was still a triple kill for Panda before it all happened. And a third Drake for Resolve Blue. Yeah, see, this is where much uh, such Crown Mac WoW goes into all chat and types of worth. Um, <laughs> and, uh, it, that, that is really sad that uh, it's really sad that uh, Gucci Gang lost that fight and in such a decisive manner too especially when you could tell that the level of outplay was there they played that fight well but just as you said couldn't have put it any better myself they were just too far behind looking at the specifics here True Hunter going straight in because they knew they could but a fantastically timed uh, Feathers Flight actually saved New Elm guys there and it was actually a really good fight here. Kindred just moving a little bit too far forward. True Hunter waiting for them to jump the ball. Really nice knowledge. Garen, like I said, kind of a lost cause at this point. And then they just follow from each team. But this Emperor's Divide was so good. That was insane right there. That's in the highlight reel. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter that you lost the fight. That right there was an amazing play. And they deserve to be proud of that at least, right? They turned that oh, yeah. from an absolute stomp into killing the AD carry. And that's, that's good. Yeah, for I mean, such can absolutely be crying about that one for quite some time to come as we do have Gucci Gang. They're trying to make the play once again. There's the laser, but it's not quite enough to finish off the job there. But it was a down close thing against Boomerang Wrencher. No, doesn't manage to connect with the dredge line. The flash forward and Gucci Gang gets something back. True Hunter has got four, has got a whole bunch of gold tied up in them. Maybe Mighty will get deleted, but the kills are coming in. Strength Panda, it I'm sorry, exhausted. It's 1v2, but they are so strong already. Six kills and the Kraken Slayer. Stratus Panda, no! Such Crow will not salvage this fight. That was Such Crow's moment to shine right there. They played that absolutely insanely. That was so good. Even though they were so far ahead, managing to pick up two kills there, you know, without the benefit of, you know, being under a tower or. Uh, having positional advantage or anything, they chased really deep, and it was just so close to killing Stra- it was, they were so strict close to killing Stratus Panda as well, but Tristana with that lifesteal and with that really easy uh, positioning with the W, it just was too much to, to deal with. Not too much to say about this uh, about this here replay, the laser was good, I think the Garanol came in on True Hunter and not Mental Boomerang? Did I see that right? I'm not sure honestly, they, but that they would be have very disappointing. They may have missed it the ultimate. Either that or they died before it could come out, but the animation had started. I mean, at least, you know, the, I guess for me, like, the headline here, as much as Stratus Panda came in and impressed at the end, is the triple kill for such crow. I mean, that's oh, yeah. enormous. Stratus Panda was already strong, but now such crow for the side of Gucci Gang, they are as well. Yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, is if your hard carry is an Azir versus a 5 and one Rek'Sai, 4 and 2 Lee and a 7 and one Tristana, there's only so much one Shuriman can do. <laughs> oh, for Resolve Blue, as we just came back from the replay there, we saw that it was a formality for them to take the Baron, and that's exactly what they did. Now close to 13k in the advantage. Again, I think you said it really well, that, you know, this is a marked improvement to form for Gucci Gang here, who refused to give up the fight, no matter how bleak the odds may be. Yeah, and, and like I say, that's that's commendable right there. It's honourable, and that that is that is an important part of playing League of Legends. It's uh, is is to is to fight the good fight, right? Even if you're gonna lose, especially in a comp in a competition, it's the it's the essence of the Huntress Trials, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, 
you get into these situations as a team where, you know, there's the games you are almost guaranteed to win, there's the games you can't win because the other team are just too good, and there are all the games which lie in the middle. And it's so hard to tell sometimes what those games in the middle are if you're not willing to fight tooth and nail for every scrap in a game. Exactly, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take, Wayne Gretzky, Michael Scott. <laughs> Very wise words yeah. for our good friend here, Escape Under the Tower. Uh, Mac is pretty strong right now, so with five yeah. kills and with a Nasha's Tooth, they can deny 2v1, but the towers are still falling. No objectives for Gucci Gang so far. The gold lead is so huge. The map presence for Resolve Blue is so overwhelming. Oh, it's absolutely ridiculous. True Hunter was there to make it so that they couldn't do anything, and True Hunter's here now to make sure that Eevee Mighty... Oh my god, using using Ram's Respite there, that's... Yikes. <laughs> that is not where you want to use that ability. And it's just like we saw from the, previous, from the previous game. You have the forcing of the ultimates from Resolve Blue. They're putting down so much pressure that Gucci Gang can't set up their own plays. 23 minutes in, the inhibitor falls. Pressure is down in bot lane and top as well. This could be a double inhibitor for Resolve Blue. Yeah, it's definitely looking like that's going to be the case. Uh, but on bot lane, they might be looking to dive this tower. Pro able to stay alive thanks to the stasis. We might almost think a turnaround play there as new Fango goes in deep. Shut down onto the Tristana. That's huge The Gucci Gang, but keep your eyes on Mental Boomerang. They have taken down one Nexus Tower. They're looking for a second. Mental does not mess around. Yeah, they are. This is so, so good from the Gwen here. Like, what? You notice, like, you notice the rest of the team is, is, is fighting and you say, right, okay, well, I'm going to put these guys in an unwinnable situation where they have to fight. They have to fight the team, but if they choose to fight the team, then I'm going to take the game. And then you, you kinda, you're kind of you kind of pulling them apart at the seams with that play. And yeah, that, that kind of thing is what will give Resolve Blue the 2-0 here. Oh my gosh. So, as you said, yeah, we saw some really good, bright spots of brilliance from Gucci Gang there, but Resolve, you know, I think, in a, in a sense, what Resolve were doing in that game was to show respect to Gucci Gang. They gave, you know, they gave Gucci no real way back into the game. They made sure there was no chance of seeing a third game at all. Yeah, it's... it's... It was rough. It was very, very rough for Gucci Gang. That was a tough match. It was a tough matchup just because of just because of who Resolve Blue are and how hungry they are and how how much they've uh, they've come in and really tried to make this tournament theirs and shown up and shown out in in, in absolute force uh, in this series today. But they gave it their best. They tried as hard as they could. They never gave up. And unfortunately, their best just wasn't enough here in the uh, in this game. Fantastic play by Resolve Blue. Literally can't fault it. They were, that first game was textbook League of Legends. It was everything they were doing was absolutely perfect. It was it was the kind of game that I would show to someone who was interested in Pro League of Legends to see how you know maybe they'd only played solo queue and they didn't know about all this coordinated play, Drake priority, Vision Wars, all, all these kinds of things because they showed everything perfectly in that first game. The second game didn't go quite as well for them because Gucci Gang, you know, they were cornered and they bit back. Harder than they uh harder than they may have done so in the first game, but overall, just not enough. Resolve Blue put on an absolute clinic, and of course, with that, it means that Gucci Gang will be exiting the tournament early, and Resolve Blue will move on to tomorrow's semi-finals and the grand finals themselves to compete for the thousand pound prize pool. Here, it's gonna feel pretty good for them. I mean, you know, based on what we've seen from Resolve so far, we were excited to see them you know play before. How much momentum do you think they're going to preserve from day one to day two? Well, when you win games like that, you're definitely feeling good about yourself, right? Like, like they are definitely in the voice chats right now just going, yeah, okay, nice, you know, good set, good set, you know. It's, it, it's a good feeling to win, especially when you win so decisively. It makes you feel like, you know, the training, the scrimming, the stuff like that, it's paid off. And I think that momentum does play a part tomorrow. I think when they go and they fight in the, uh, in the semifinals, we will see some of this energy. Problem is, is will it stay there? How well will it do them? Can they carry it through the semifinals? Can they carry it to the finals? All these questions and more will be answered tomorrow, and I could not be more excited to see them.
So that does mean, unfortunately, guys, for today, we've only got the one series to bring you, but tomorrow, the action will, of course, continue to heat up as our teams, which made it through from day number one, will continue on to fight further. Of course, you know, sheep, you know, from the previous trials that everyone stands in the shadow of the Galaxy Racer EU squad who proved to be ridiculously dominant. But we're always, always keeping our eyes out for teams you know, who can manage to put the challenge to Galaxy Racer. Oh yeah. The finals are definitely going to be something that no one here, no one who has any interest in League of Legends esports at all is going to want to miss. But uh, the semi-finals coming up as well will also be an interesting one, as, uh, will also be an interesting one too. Tomorrow, we're going to see some good League of Legends. So I wouldn't want to miss it. And I don't think you'd want to miss it either. So we'll see you here then.